Okay, if you want to add a constraint to an existing table, as I said a moment ago, you'll use the alter table command. You can add a not null constraint using the modify clause of the alter table com command. All other constraints are added using the add clause. So, in essence, the, the, the exception with the not null here is because you're simply going to modify an existing field or column. So you can use the alter table modify clause to add a not null constraint to that particular column. But with the other types of constraints, rather than modifying a column, you have to use the alter table command and add a constraint. Here's adding a primary key constraint. This syntax diagram is on page 103. The primary key constraint ensures that columns do not duplicate um, and that that particular column cannot contain null values. So again, the primary key um, ensures that no two records in the table will be um, the same. You can only have one primary key constraint per table. Don't confuse this with um, what I said a moment ago that you could have multiple columns as your primary key. You can have multiple columns as your primary key, but that those multiple columns would combine to create your primary key. You can only have one primary key per table. Okay, here's an example of a constraint checked with data input. So we're going to write an insert statement to insert a record into the table. And they're inserting uh, into the customer's table the customer number, last name, first name, and region. And then they provide values. These are the values they provide. Okay. Um, they get an error, and I'm going to this this example is on page 104, but I'm going to uh, remove the page number so that you can uh, read through this if you'd like to pause the video and read through this um, example. But again, it's on page 104 in your book. The error references a constraint name, and you can see here, I hope that you can see where this would come in very handy so you can understand why there's an error. Um, the error is on the uh, primary key constraint, so it must be that um, uh, this particular customer number is already used. All right, if you want to create a composite primary key, composite means made up of more than one. Okay, composite primary key. You need to list the column names within parentheses separated by commas. So again, alter table statement. We're going to run an alter, sta alter table statement on the order items table. And you're going to add a constraint. This is the cre create, I'm sorry. This is the constraint name that you provide. The keyword's primary key to say what type of constraint it is. And then in parentheses, you provide the names of the columns in parentheses, again, separated by a comma. So in this particular example, the order number field, the item number field are combined to create a primary key for the order items table. Okay, if you want to create a foreign key constraint, um, this requires a, a value to exist in the referenced column of another table. In other words, if you want to create a foreign key for the orders table, 
because you want the orders table to be related to the customers table. You want to ensure that a customer number cannot be entered for an order if that customer number doesn't already exist. So that's where the foreign key constraint comes in. And that's another one of those examples of how these constraints ensure data integrity. You can't place an order for a customer that doesn't exist. And you prevent that by creating a foreign key constraint. In a foreign key constraint, null values are allowed. So, if we use that example that I just gave, placing an order for a customer that doesn't exist, you also don't want to place an order for a customer with place an order without a customer number. So, that's an example of where you might have two separate constraints on a field. And that's possible also. I think we discussed that on a previous slide. The foreign key constraint enforces referential integrity. Okay, so in other words, the orders table refers to the customers table and it ensures that the customer number referenced does exist in the customers table. That's what they mean by referential integrity. It maps to the primary key in a parent table. Again, a foreign key in one table maps to the primary key of another table. Okay. Here's an example of a foreign key constraint um, being added to an existing table. And we run the alter table statement on the orders table. And we're going to add the constraint. And here's that name that you provide the keywords foreign key to identify what type of constraint it is. Now, this is referencing the customer number column in the orders table. So the constraint is on the customer number column of the orders table. It references the customers table. And which column in the customers table does it reference? It references the customer number. That might sound confusing, but in the long run, once you understand this concept, I strongly suggest that your foreign key columns, the foreign key column, in this case in the orders table, the column name matches the column name of the parent table. In this case, the parent table is the customer's table. Okay, if you want to delete a foreign key value, um, you cannot delete a value in a parent table referenced by a row in a child table. In other words, we can't delete the customer record if that customer has existing records in the table. Unless you use the on delete cascade option in your your statement to delete the uh, record. So you can use the on delete cascade keywords when creating foreign key constraints. It automatically deletes a parent row when the row in the child table is deleted. Okay. And this on delete cascade keywords when creating the 